final stretch here. Tomorrow, we are getting the Gladiator. Satish is here, he's spending the night, and then first thing in the morning, we're headed from here in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. We're heading up to Bristol, uh, Tennessee, and we are uh, picking up the Gladiator. And from there, he's gonna head back to Atlanta. The only problem we have right now is the weather. So we just had massive snow storm come through and it's going to drop below freezing again tonight. Uh, here in South Carolina, we just got rain. So Satish said that he got some some snow on the way from Atlanta. Yeah, we're uh, we're excited. You're okay. We are one hour away from getting to ship Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat, something. Uh, one hour away uh, from getting the Gladiator. My buddy uh, Satish is driving me up in his Jeep. He's supposed to get uh, two to three inches of snow up here on this side of the mountain, uh, north of Asheville, in between Asheville and uh, Bristol, Tennessee. And um, the drive from Columbia to Asheville was easy, no issues. Um, the roads were clear. Once we got through Asheville, the roads became not icy, but snowy, and there were some cars sliding, but we're experienced with this. I'm from Chicago originally, that's where I learned how to drive. My buddy Satish, he lived up in Minnesota for years and learned how to drive in the snow up there. So people say you're crazy for picking up a brand new Jeep in a snowstorm, but you know what? It makes a good story. Check in with you guys when we get there. We got the Mopar steel bumper back here that I'm gonna throw on. We got skids, tow package, LED lights. Fox 2.0, Wild Peak mud tires. ride in the diesel Rubicon Gladiator 37 miles Got my seatbelt on very excited all right we're headed home probably got another uh, Two hours and 42 minutes left. It's sleeting outside a little bit. 26 degrees, so we're coming up on the worst part up here. Just before Asheville, it was real snowy on the way up through the mountain, so wish us luck. All right, 
right, so here is the steam gray clear coat. And the base price was $47,260 for a Gladiator Rubicon 4x4. I got black uh, bucket seats interior, 3.0 V6 turbo diesel motor with the 8 speed. And um, I don't know what the Jeep Wave membership is, but we're going to look it up. Uh, all the things we have on it. The end of 44s, 410, gear axle, which is not a 410. Fox 2.0. So it does have a lockable rear seat storage. So here's where we get the optional equipment that I added. It's actually 295 for the clear coat of the Sting Gray, which is stupid. But you have to pay extra for paint. Um, I did get the trailer tow package, which is the receiver hitch, and then the uh, $995 cold weather group, which is the heated front seats, heated steering wheel, and the remote start. Premium LED is now almost $1,500, but I don't know. It's worth it. The auxiliary group switch is worth it. The trail rail management system. for the bed worth it I don't know why it says so I got the slush mats which is worth it the um, freedom panel storage bag delete I don't know why that's on there automatic so I had to pay two grand for that transmission and another four thousand for the uh, turbo diesel I also opted for the fifteen hundred dollar three-piece hardtop and I opted another $195 for the uh, mud terrain tires and another $500 for the trail cam. So grand total is $61,840. Uh, we ended up paying right around 57, I believe. The uh, warranty coverage is five years, 100,000 miles powertrain, 336 basic. But I did, ha I do have a lifetime powertrain through the dealer. So, we're covered with that. So, 21 city, 27 highway. And uh, that is diesel. And this vehicle was built for me. Um, not rated yet, because it is a 2022. 21% Mexico. 68% U.S. Canada. Engine, trans engines from Italy, transmissions in Germany. Here we are underneath a diesel Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. As you can see, the exhaust there's some kind of electronic baffle right here. There's no, that's an exhaust baffle that opens up the flow of the exhaust because there's no, uh, all that is is the electric motor pushing down on that. Looks like you have a two sensor or something right there. Heavy skid plates all the way across above the transfer case, fuel tank. Looks like parking brake. Yeah, that's the parking brake lever cable. Up there you got your breather hose, electronic diff lock. Coming back here, you have your cables for the uh, four wheel drive selector. More skid plate. Front diff. This appears to be a cast iron knuckle. That's not aluminum. Those are aluminum bolts. 
beefy steering, beefy steering stabilizer. You got your front diff locker. Um, heavy duty Fox 2.0 shocks, dual piston calipers. Look how beefy that steering knuckles are, or steering rods are. I mean, those are probably like three inches thick. Right there is your sway bar disconnect. Metal skid. Yeah, so everything is pretty much tight up here. So see the, the Rubicon rails aren't technically frame sliders. Um, but they do protect the rails, the frame, the, uh, the pinch rails. It is good protection, better than nothing, because you're going to hit your uh, frame rails first anyway. Anyway, we're down here just looking at the, uh, diff breathers, right? It appears there's exhaust on the passenger side. I got the tow package, so I got the tow bar back here. And this is a skid. This is a trailer hitch skid that I bought. So when you come up off something. So here's your rear diff breather, right? So it comes up up on the bottom of there and it's got a knuckle on it. So it is a raised diff breather. And then the front one is this one right here. This line follows the metal one and it looks like it comes up right there. And it probably tees into the uh, the other factory, the one for the transmission. Now for the front diff, yeah, that is the front diff one. So up here, wow, you got a lot of stuff jammed in here. Trans cooler, inner cooler. Not a fan of those lug nuts. 